Hi, welcome to another new video. In today's video, we'll be doing a swatch with me video. Um, like finally, after so long. The last swatch with me was um, uh, Hobins and it was like last year. So this is finally, uh, we are finally doing Daniel Smith. Um, but this is not the 238, now probably more uh, colors. This is the 36 colors. Um, mineral Marvel. It contains 36 unique mineral watercolor dots. So Daniel Smith is known for their um, mineral colors um, and they, they term it the Prima Tech colors. So they, they came out with this several months, I think several years back, two years back or so, one or two years back. Um, but I didn't get it like immediately. But recently because I, I'm doing the limited palette challenge and we are looking at Prima Tech colors, so I thought, you know, why not you know, look through all the colors, try to try it out. Um, and I think it's quite quite interesting and I think it worth, it's worth swatching, swatching it um, real time. I mean like, um, so you guys can see how it swatches. So if you open it up, um, you will find like little, little cards, small side cards. And there's actually a printed brochure on the uh, color information. So they provided the light fastness information, uh, where it's staining the granulation and transparency and here are the colors so they actually provided the swatch the colors you know the um, I would say official swatch cut charts but of course I think we, we still prefer to swatch it ourselves this is also quite nice because they also tell you all the information here like if it's uh, light fast if it's staining if it's granulating transparency and yeah and stuff like that so we all know like um, Prima Tech colors are kind of um, they're special because they use genuine um, that's controversy, but I'm sure that, that I'm, I, I, what I can be sure is that they probably use some. I'm not sure if they do mix it with other colors, but they definitely use um, the genuine uh, minerals for, for, for making each of these colors. But of course, there are also, you know, people say like they actually use, mix it with other, um, you know, the inorganic pigments, uh, man-made pigments. I mean, yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's let's see um, what we have here. So they actually have little um, uh, index cards, cards like this, uh, where they have four colors in one, and then they gave it a nice like like kind of group it up according to the colors and how they actually get it. So there's baked earth, green gem, uh, green gems, rocking red, um, oceanic, um, royal purple, red sands, red earth, and uh, Moth, uh, metamorphic black and blue beauties, and be behind these, um, um, each each card contains four colors, and the back there's a description of uh, where they get this from, um, and maybe some information like that you 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 be good for you to kind of know. So I must say that um, compared to the dot cards, um, <laughs> the official dot cards, they they gave like much more pain, right? Um, for the dot cards compared to to those that you see in the um, the two hundred and thirty eight color uh, dot cards, um, and they they are as you can see um, nicely hand squeezed like hand prepared. I I didn't follow um, how they actually group the colors together. So what I did was I kind of uh, um, I I, I pre arranged them. Um, according to kind of the the, the color wheel. Without further ado, let's just go ahead and uh, do the swatch with me. For Tiger, Tiger's Eye Genuine, it is a non-staining color, uh, transparent, granulating, and it's a series 2 color. Um, it is made from, uh, it's made from a brownish gold stone with rippling bands of light that reminds you of cat's eyes. The combination of quartz and iron oxide produces a remarkable paint that's very transparent and slow, uh, strongly granulate, uh, granulating. So the My location is in Africa. It's under red earth, sickle right. Sickle right genuine. It is non-staining. Uh, it's transparent and granulating. It's a series four color. It is a wonderful neutral cocoa brown, named after the mineral collectors who discovered it in San Diego County in 1912. It, dis it displays beautiful granulation and washes down from a dark chocolate brown to a soft cafe au lait. So th there's a suggestion like they uh, to try mixing it with French ultramarine for atmospheric blue-gray or Sleeping Beauty turquoise for a soft ocean green. Sounds really nice. So the mine location is in Colorado, USA. So the one thing about color charts sometimes is that um, they can be quite 
difficult to re-wet. Okay, so I, I, I will not kind of lie, like this is really a little bit hard to re-wet. So this color is, I would say, um, comparing to the color on top, the burn, the, the Tiger Eye Genuine, this is more reddish brown, right? Bronzite Genuine is this one. So it's, it's under red sands. This is Bronzite Genuine. It is a non-staining color. It's transparent, granulating, and it has fine shimmering particles. It's a Series 3 color. Um, it is a warm honey bronze color with luxurious sparkle provided by very fine films of iron oxide. This fibrous, fairly fragile uh, bronzite stone from Brazil is occasionally used in jewelry but excels as, as a watercolor pigment. It's a warm gold brown in mass tone and somewhat between uh, ochre and, and sienna um, but distinctively different as it grates down uh, into, a, into pale washes of soft always warm sandy beige. In a wash on cold press or rough paper, the brown settles out of this intriguing special effect color. So this color, um, this paint uh, is made from bronzite that is mined um, at in Brazil. And this place is called Bella Horizonte, I think. <laughs> so there's actually quite a lot of um, um, mine locate, that's located in Brazil. I really love the color. It's it's really soft. It feels it looks like a raw sienna color, and it sparkles. So here you don't really see that sparkle. This is under baked earth, right? Yama pie, yava yava pie. <laughs> okay, yava pie, genuine. It's quite a cute name. This color is non-staining, it's transparent and granulating. It is a Series 2 color. Um, and the description is provided in um, Daniel Smith's website says it, uh, the Apache legend speaks of a single dove that left the edge of the original world and saw the world. When the great floods came, uh, the, this dove led the first woman to the safety of the Yavapai. Um, the endurance of the stone symbolizes the endurance of the human spirit. Made from Arizona rock, Yava Pai Genuine is semi-transparent with surprisingly smooth textures in washes. Okay, um, and my location is in Arizona, in USA. So the next row are actually the reds, and uh, we start with this color called Sedona. We have Sedona. Sedona is non-staining, semi-transparent, semi-opaque, and it's granulating. It's a Series 2 color. So for millennium, Sedona has ignite, ignited the imagination of every creative spirit fortunate enough to feel its dazzle. With color cast from a desert crucible, fire spirals burst on a field of pure cerulean sky, humbling the observer in absolute wonder. Wow. <laughs> this ethereal red connects us to the people who, who, was, who were first mesmerized by the region 11,000 years ago. After, after a trip to the southwest, um, they know, or Daniel Smith knows, that they had to create rocks from uh, paint from the rocks. So it's made from with authentic, authentic rock from the Arizona desert. So this color is richly pigmented and absolutely permanent. So it's uh, mined in Arizona, USA. Mummy balsa. It's also a red. It's like a, like a or um, brown, red brown. It's under red earth. Okay. Half mummy balsic, balsic. I think. Um, it is a low staining. Uh, it's a semi opaque, semi transparent color, granulating, and it's the only series one color in the Prima Tech series. Um, so unlike the nineteenth century color, said to be made. It's said to be ground from Egypt's, Egyptian mummies. Um, this uh, mummy balsic is made from inorganic balsic, balsite, a mixture of uh, aluminum oxides, and it's light fast, semi-transparent, and low staining. So it's a warm cinnamon color and granulates dramatically to resemble rusted iron. So the the uh, mine mine location is in Weipa, um, Australia. I'm sure I didn't pronounce that right as well. <laughs> It's um, Minnesota Pipestone Genuine. So this is the one. It's under rocking red. We have uh, Minnesota 
Pipe Stone Genuine. It's a non-staining color, semi, semi-opaque, semi-transparent, uh, granulating series 2. Um, and this, as according to Daniel Smith, an American pipe stone is a stone that unifies people in a time of transition. So this sacred mineral was the stone of choice for the legendary Swall's Peace Pipes. It's a warm, soft, lovely pink um, and semi-opaque granulates beautifully and it's permanent, as permanent as the rock which, from which it is made. So this is the color. So it's located, the mine location is in Minnesota, USA, of course. This is a color that I have, it's uh, uh, Garnet Genuine. I have this color, I love it. It's on the same card as the Rocking Reds, it's over here, Garnet Genuine. Garnet Genuine, so this is one of my favorite colors. Uh, one of my favorite red colors. It is low staining, transparent, granulating, and it's a series four color. One of the one of the more expensive colors. So according to Daniel Smith, um, garnet genuine watercolor has all the warmth and allure of the January birthstone. It's a gorgeous warm reddish orange with similar hue, uh, but more textured than the than the quinacridone burnt scarlet, which I also like. So um, they suggested like we try mixing it with cerulean blue for beautiful grays, and it reticulate. It reticulates wonderfully and creates unexpected surprises in washes. What is reticulate? <laughs> anyway, they mine this from Brazil. Red Jasper uh, Genuine is part of the Red Sands. So we have this uh, color called Red Jasper Genuine. Um, it is a non-staining um, color, semi-opaque, semi-transparent, granulating series 3 color. So um, in the description it says it's a lovely pinkish brown in light washes and medium reddish maroon in mass tone over here as you can see. So you can see the difference um, and they say think cedar bark. Um, it is a granulating, semi-transparent, non-staining and has excellent light fastness. Red Jasper Genuine is a wonderful colour for landscape birds like common male common chaffinch and reddish Egret, as well as animals that have a medium to light reddish coat, like the red panda. So this place, this um, um, red jasper is mined in the Gwalior, Gwalior, Gwalior region in India. Sorry, I'm butchering, I'm butchering all the names. Um, it's like an Indian red, like um, Kaput Mortem, light. Color, although it is not that opaque because we know how opaque the uh, Indian red is. So this is the burn bronzite, and it's also under red sands. We have burn bronzite, so it's a non-staining color. It's transparent, granulating, and it's series three, and it also has shimmering, shimmering particles uh, like the bronzite um, that we've mentioned earlier. So it's um, uh, it, according to Daniel Smith, um, this color pushes the honey tone of bronzite genuine to a more coppery hue. So both deeper brown and more orange is ideal for portrait work, as it easily produces a a wide range of flash tones. So like Bronzite Genuine, it gets a subtle lustrous sparkle from iron oxide. So it's also mined the same place, the Belo Horizonte in, um, in Brazil. Um, so Primontite is part of the Red Earth. This is one of my favorite colors. Uh, it is the Pimontite Genuine. It's low staining, uh, semi-transparent, granulating in series 4. So it's ground from a, a scarlet streak mineral. Pimontite Genuine is a rich, versatile watercolor. The deep amethyst em is, is the dark uh, value of this transparent watercolor, so it gets pretty dark, like an amethyst color. And adding water produces this lovely uh, violet-brown granulation with carmine tone, so it's like I, can you see it's like um, brownish, reddish, um, yeah, beautiful. It's perfect for adding um, to shadows and painting the uh, melted surfaces of autumn leaves. So this uh, mineral is mined from Alaska, USA. I, I really don't know how to pronounce this. So it's the red Faschit? 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 <laughs> so next we have red Freshet. 
fuchsite. Red fuchsite. Um, this is a non-staining color. It's transparent, granulating, and it has shimmering particles. It is a series three color. Um, so according to Daniel Smith, it, the mountains of Brazil yield this beloved and treasured gemstone. So paint this soft, reddish, dusty roast and watch as the mineral iridescent sheen rise to the surface of your brush stroke. Give new um, give new definition to your skies, botanicals, and reflections. So I have this one. I bought this quite a while ago, but I haven't really used it yet. So I am interested to see how it actually would perform. Maybe I would do it in a new, like I would use it in one of the new uh, limited palette challenge. So this color, this, this uh, mineral is mined from um, Brazil. So this is the hematite burn scarlet genuine. It's part of the red earth. This is the hematite burn scarlet. So hematite burn scarlet is a low staining, uh, semi-transparent, semi-opaque color, granulating in series three. So um, hematite stones are crushed and milled to a fine pigment to create a dramatic reddish brown watercolor with maximum granulation. So uh, you you can use this color to add texture. It's perfect for for rugged. Uh, landscapes and the natural texture of wood, stones and bricks. And in thick wash, the heavier particle settles, creating the granulation. So as you can see, it's beautiful granulating um, coming out here. Like a brown, it's under the big earth card. Next we have burned tiger's eye. Um, it is uh, supposed to be a low staining color. It's a transparent granulating and it is in series two. So this color here is um, it's a burnt version of the tiger's eye genuine that we saw um, in, in a, uh, just a while ago. It is heated in a furnace, uh, calcinated to change the iron oxide from the cool olive uh, to a warm reddish brown in hue. So it's a great complement to greens and making flesh tones. Um, and it's mined in Africa, just like the Tiger's Eye Genuine. This is how it looks. It's like, a, it says here it's under royal purple because I guess it has the violet in it. Well, it's hematite violet, one of my favorites because of the crazy separation. It is low staining, um, semi opaque, semi-transparent, granulating color, semi, uh, is, in a, is in series 3. So according to Daniel Smith, uh, it's a rich shadowy violet washes. Uh, it can make rich shadowy violet washes um, and it started with a pattern of deep granulation. It brings excitement to neutral tones um, and it, you, know, you can paint things like driftwoods, tree barks and rocky cli cliffs um, and be inspired um, and by this rugged violet that stays true to its excellent light fastness. So together with the um, hematite burnt scarlet, um, this color and also the hematite, they are all mined from uh, Cedar City in Utah, USA. Rhodonite, genuine thunder rocking red. So it looks like this, red. So rhodonite, rhodonite is uh, non-staining transparent and non-granulating it is a series 2 color this is one of the non one of the rare non-staining colors in the uh, primatech series of colors um, it's it's uh, made from jewelry quality stone this versatile roast pink is wonderful for portraits and landscape use wet on wet it creates a soft transparent glow without granulation and at full value it's more intense but still transparent, low staining and non-granulating. So this is uh, mine from the Bella Horizonte um, in Brazil. It, it, I feel it is a, like a lighter version of the quinacridone rose. Purple right is this one. It's like a dark violet color. It's under the royal purple car. This color is purple right. Purple right genuine is a low staining. Um, it is semi, semi opaque, semi transparent, it's granulating, and it's a series 2 color. It is officially discovered in 1905, and it's uh, named for the Latin word uh, purpura, meaning purple. It's a rich lavender violet, it's semi transparent with low staining levels, so it offers a lot of versatility. Um, and it's also a mineral with naturally, naturally occurring low luster and sub metallic sheen. I don't see it. <laughs> Yeah, but it has, according to um, Daniel Smith, um, it is mined from Col Colorado in USA. OK, 
Okay, this is a Mattis. It's also like a dark purple color under royal purple. Next, we have a Mattis. Uh, so, M a Mattis is a low staining, uh, semi opaque, semi transparent, uh, granulating color that is shimmery. So it has some luster particles, some sheen to it. It's a series four color. Um, so Daniel Smith, Daniel Smith describes this, um, has this to say, it's ancient Egyptian used the amethyst to guard against guilty and fearful feeling. So the amethyst has long been used to open the spiritual and psychic centers, making it one of the power stones. So this, this watercolor is a rich, true purple black in in mass tone and it's capable of infinite gradation. So I guess you can layer it. Um, it also uh, produces uh, lovely clear uh, washes with very faint touch of sparkle. So this is Gamay from Soladet in, in Brazil. This is Suji Light. This one under royal purple. We have Suji Light. Suji Light is low staining. It's uh, transparent, granulating, and it has a shimmering particle. It's a series three color. Um, and the description says uh, it is a beautiful granulating pigment from Australia. Uh, first, first found in 1944 and named after uh, the Japanese geologist who discovered it, Kenichi Sugi. Ah, I see. So as a watercolor pigment, it combines uh, subtle fuchsia pink and warm grey in a single strongly textured colour. Um, and in a wash, the grey settles with a slight graphite-like sheen, while the pink rises to resemble the colour of an overcast sky. So it's a great complement uh, to gold, or orange, and green, including quinacridone gold and set green. So looks like a very versatile colour to use. So this is mine from Australia. This is Kyanite. Okay, it's under Blue Beauty. We have Kyanite. Right, it's a non-staining, um, transparent, uh, granulating color that it has fine particles, a little shimmer in it, and it's a it's a it's a um, series four color. So this color is a stunning, rich blue gray with impressive granulation and dazzling, glittery sparkle. So its name comes from the Greek word kionos, meaning dark blue and enamel. So thought to promote ser serenity, concentration, and mental clarity, this shiny translucent gemstone is used uh, for, for jewelry and heat-resistant ceramics. Yeah, and this is mine from Brazil. It's a beautiful color. I actually have this one. Next color is uh, Lapis Lazuri. So Lapis Lazuri Genuine is one of those colors that are they look, it looks, looks really nice, like the mass tone looks really, really good, but when you swatch it, you get a big disappointment. We have Lapis Lazuri. It is non-staining, it's transparent, granulating, um, and it's Series 5, one of the more expensive colours here. Um, so it goes back a long time. So this, this pigment is prized for its beauty and mystic properties. So ancient um, civilization believed the vines of um, glittery pyrites found in lapis uh, actual, uh, are actual gold, so it makes it really expensive. So the stones expense today, as in the ancient world, results from its hardness making the extraction difficult. So this is mound in the mountains of a uh, mine in the mountains of South America. It's a clear opulent blue. Um, and that inclusion of that golden pyrite um, adds this little some some shimmer. Okay, I don't see it. <laughs> the result is almost three-dimensional, which is completely different from the predictable blue of the synthetic um, ultramarine pigments. So um, according to Daniel Smith, um, Daniel Smith says that the uh, Lapis Lazuri is, is, is at least 80% pure gem pigment suspended in a natural binder. So this is mined from Chile. So Sodalite is um, part of the metamorphic black color. I have sodalite. So sodalite is not low staining. Um, it's a semi-opaque color. It's granulating. You see, I think it's a series 4 color. And it is um, uh, supposed to be, according to Daniel Smith, uh, it's a, it's um, in watercolor, this inky color of semi-precious stone granulates as it dries and layer, layering a, a blue black textural surface on its smooth blue gray undertone. So it creates a three-dimensional quality as it dries. Beautiful. This is one of the, those colors that I, I really like.
It's, it's a wee bit like black, slightly black, it's like blue and it's like purple all in one. Blue Appetite Genuine here is under Blue Beauties, this one. I have Blue Appetite. Uh, Blue Appetite is non-staining, transparent, granulating and it's a series 4 colour. So gorgeous in colour, Blue Appetite is a striking mineral that is rarely used in jewellery due to its relative softness. As an artist's pigment, it is fantastic and dense, rich midnight blue that granulates magnificently on cold or hot pressed paper. So within a washes, nonce of, uh, nonce, nonce of colours are revealed, um, creating... Um, uh, yeah, from inky near black to rich Prussian light blue and you can create a stormy sky in one juicy stroke. So this mineral is uh, mined in Brazil. Okay. Mayan blue is part of the oceanic. Okay. Mayan blue. So Mayan blue is low staining. Um, it is uh, slightly less, it has uh, most of the colors in the um, uh, Primatec uh, series of pigments of colors. Um, this series they are mostly light fast, it has excellent light fastness. So this is the only one that has slightly less, it's like good light fastness only, which is why you see that, that um, Roman numeral 2. Um, it's transparent, granulating, and it's a series 3 color. So uh, Mayan Blue is a gorgeous green tin, uh, tinted uh, indigo, uh, and it has a long time ago, it adores the uh, murals and sculptures of the Mayan people and were featured, featured in their rites and rituals. Um, and despite like being exposed to severe heat and humidity, the, the colour has hardly faded. Um, and using the, the method derived from ancient Mayan chemistry, this unique metal-free pigment has been recreated using an eco-friendly process. So its versatility, durability and exquisite hue makes it an instant favourite. So this is made or mined from Texas, USA. This is Sleeping Beauty Turquoise, looks like cobalt too. Next we have Sleeping Beauty Turquoise. It's a non-staining color, semi-opaque, transparent, tra semi-opaque, granulating, and it's a series 5 colors. Except it is the same, um, it costs the same probably as, it costs the same as Lapis Lazuli. Um, so this color here, it's uh, a unique vibrant blue from the Sleeping Beauty Mountain in Arizona. Um, and it's light fast, permanent, and it's uh, with none of the transient color fade that plucks most, um, plucks most um, turquoise colors. Um, yeah, so it's mined from Arizona in USA. Okay, next we have this color called Freshite. Freshite. So remember we have the red Freshite. Freshite. This is the this is the green one. We have the color Freshite. Fresh, fresh side. So we have seen the red fresh, fresh side, and this is the uh, fresh, fresh side, which is green in color. Um, it is a uh, non-staining. Um, it's a transparent and non-granulating color, but it has shimmering particles, and it is a, a series two color. So it's made from pure fresh side, fresh side, a mineral like mica, uh, a mineral with a mineral with mica-like characteristics. So this color creates uh, a luminous pearly green shimmer and a trans the transparent quality of this color is great for layering. You can glaze it over stronger greens to soften and enhance foliages. It, uh, it is mined in Brazil. So this is under Oceanic. This is the color, Kingman Green Turquoise. We have the Kingman Green Turquoise. Um, Kingman Green turquoise is non-staining, it's transparent, granulating, um, it's a series 5 colour, so it's as expensive as the Sleeping Beauty turquoise and the Lapis Lazuli. Um, it is um, natural Kingman green turquoise genuine, captures the magic and mystery uh, of the ancient southwest in the subtle green turquoise. It's mined near Kingman, Arizona, which lies along the Native American trade route. So this is color, it's under the green gems. This is uh, Amazonite. Next we have Amazonite. So Amazonite is non-staining um, and it is a transparent, non-granulating color series 2. Um, so it is a pure, strong pure color that's completely transparent, non-staining and it lifts easily for maximum versatility. So it, it provides all the magic of hills and forests of Brazil. It's a lovely tail shade uh, of feel spa, micro, micro line, 
microline, a precious mineral that's named after the uh, Amazon forest. And in the ancient time, it's used as uh, war paint. Wow, okay. Um, and legend states that it, when you wear a piece of Am Amazonite, you will harmonize your soul and be attuned to the spiritual dimensions. Oh, that's really interesting. So this is this uh, mineral is mined from Minas Gerais in uh, in Brazil. Serpentine genuine is in the green gems. I have serpentine. I have this color and I love it. I love it. It's non-staining, semi-opaque, um, granulating color. That is, uh, it's a series four color. Um, and this is from Australia. It's a rich, it's a green serpentine um, color. And it's a soft stone used cross culture, culture, culturally, <laughs> culturally uh, to create amulets used to harm off, uh, ward off harm. Uh, this surprising semi-transparent paint is a luminous green that granulates um, uh, sparks, sparks of burnt scarlet, and it's a great addition uh, to landscape and floral palette. Okay, and it's mine, mined in Australia. The next color is uh, green appetite. So green appetite is under um, the oceanic card, green appetite genuine. Next we have green appetite genuine. Um, it is a low staining color with uh, semi opaque granulating and it's, uh, it's a series three. Uh, green appetite watercolor al allows you to create a beautiful range of greens from the fresh yellow green to deep, deep um, olive color within a single tube. This sed sedimentary color is dark, almost brown olive green in mass tone, and in washes, the brown will settle out um, of the, the natural green, creating um, texture and contrast. So it is uh, mined from it's um, from the Yates Yates mine, or is it Yates mine, uh, in Canada. So diopside is one of those green colors. Um, very interesting green. So let me see if it's here. Okay, it's also under oceanic diopside. Diopside. Uh, diopside is a not low staining, transparent granulating color. And it's a series three color. It is a rich uh, gemstone green, um, and it's known also known as the Russian uh, emerald. It is uh, usually seen in fine jewelry, and this is um, Daniel Smith is the first. A company that makes it into watercolor. Mm, all right, <laughs> it it can it it will uh, it, the colors will range from a deep bottle green to a pale pale mean, mint, um, and the chrom, chromium rich stone from which it is ground is green um, and with brown brownish inclusion. Um, so it's good for landscape and it's mined in in Australia. So Jedi Genuine is also one of those colors that I have. It is under green gems. Jedi. So Jedi Genuine is a non-staining color, which is semi-opaque and it's granulating. Um, it is a series four color. Um, this, except, this color is uh, made from the more strongly colored of the two minerals known as jade and the other is nephrite. Uh, it's used for a long time in China and Central America and um, it, is, it can range from uh, deep, dark green mass tone to very pale wash like mint color like light green color um, creating all the shades that we can think of when we think about uh, jade so it's mine from Alaska USA and this one here is called zoazite okay so this color is very close to perylene green um, zoazite here genuine this color is zoazite or zoazite genuine it is low staining, semi opaque, transparent, uh, semi opaque, semi transparent color, granulates, and it is in series four. So this color is from Australia. It's discovered in eighteen o four. It is a large primal green with a dark, almost black bottle green granulating surface. So you, it's almost black if you can see that. And and when you when you dilute it down, it, it looks gray green, um, almost like perylene green. Next color is called black 
tumari. Tomaline. This is also under the metamorphic black. So the next color is black tumaline. So it's non-staining, transparent, granulating color, and it is a um, CB3 color. It is as dark as night or as pale as wispy as a wispy fog. This intriguing color is made from a semi-precious stone, thought to bring luck, dispel negativity, and promote clarity of purposes. Purpose. In washes, especially on rough paper, it, it displays excellent granulation with a delicate, delicate settling and a tracery of spidery runs. Um, and when you dilute it, it becomes a beautiful pearl grey. And it's mined from uh, uh, it's mined at uh, this place uh, at Bra in Brazil. The mine is located in Brazil. This is just hematite black. Okay, so this is the black tone. It's also in metamorphic black. All right, and next we have hematite. Hematite is low staining, semi-transparent, uh, semi-opaque, granul granulating color. That is it. That is a series three color. So hematite genuine is ground from a heavy silvery black mi mineral rich in iron. In thick wash, the heavier particles settle, creating bold granulation. And in thin wash, it's a very soft gray, as you can see. Um, and when you paint with the hematite, the Greek name for bloodstone, you can almost feel the pounding of battle drums as ancient, ancient warriors cover their bodies with hematites. Oh, that's interesting. Ooh, okay, so you can find out a little bit more of the description of hematite genuine from the uh, website, from the PDF that is provided by Daniel Smith from your website. So this is mined in um, Cedar City, Utah, USA, which is the same as your, uh, is where your hematite burn, uh, scarlet genuine and the hematite violet genuine um, are mined from. Hmm, where's bloodstone? Oh, it's under rocking red. So I don't know why I put it under rocking, it's under rocking red. Not least, we have this uh, Bloodstone Genuine. It is non-staining, transparent, granulating color, and it's a Series 2 color. So it is legendary for its mystical, magical, and me medicinal property. Um, it has its, its intense velvety albergine mass tone develops into a grey, a warm grey wash that lives beautifully, provides Instant gratification when it comes to granulation. Look at the granulation. Um, and it, it performs well on uh, hot or whole press paper. Um, and it's wonderful with uh, transparent uh, ro rhodonite um, genuine or quinacridone burnt orange. Uh, burnt orange. Um, it's mined from Alaska, USA. I'm not sure if you can see this. Um, from the video, but um, I've just put this in the sun just to show you the sparkly, spluck, sparkly, um, to just show you the effect, the shimmering effect that is uh, mentioned. So I think for the first row, we don't really get much um, sparkle, right? And if I, I move on to the second, second row, you actually see that um, there are actually three colors here that are, that are shimmery. First is the burnt bronzite. This is really, can you see that sparkle? It's very, very obvious. And then we have the amethyst and the freshite over here. And for the third row, uh, we have um, two colors that, are, that, that stands out, the bronzite genuine, and also the shuji light, sugi light. And finally, the last row, we have the red freshite and the kyanite. So here, these are the um, very obviously um, shimmering ones. So if you are like interested in these uh, colors, um, yeah, these are the ones to go for. Hey, thanks for staying throughout the whole swatching video. I know it's a very long uh, swatching video, um, yeah, but I think it can be quite, quite uh, therapeutic sometimes. But anyway, um, at, in this juncture, I'm just going to give you an overview of the colors here. So um, uh, with respect to its uh, pigment properties uh, as a watercolor uh, paint, is um, they uh, for transparency, um, there are 36 colors here for transparency, 20 of them are transparent and then 16 of them are semi-transparent or semi-opaque. Um, and in terms of staining, um, they are mainly non-staining or lightly staining colors. So um, about 21 of them, uh, 21 of them are non-staining and 15 low staining. Um, and in terms of light fastness, they are excellent light fastness, except Mayan Blue Genuine, which is uh, just good. All right. 
Um, and in terms of granulation, they are mostly gen granulating. About 33 of them are granulating. There are three non-granulating ones, which I kind of mentioned um, just now in the video. Um, and there are sh seven shimmering um, you know, um, um, paints with shimmering particles. And uh, in terms of their pricing, they range from uh, Series 1 to Series 5. There's one that's Series 1, uh, that's a Series 1 color. There are two, uh, 10 Series 2 colors, 12 Series 3 colors, 10 Series 4 colors, and there are actually 3 Series 5 colors. So yeah, this is a very quick overview, so I would kind of, you know, if people ask me about um, Daniel Smith Mineral, Mineral Primatech colors, what would I say? They are highly transparent, they are like non-staining, lightly staining, they have excellent light fastness, and they are mostly granulating. So, now let's go to an interesting part where I kind of rate them based on um, um, all these properties um, and also based on what I like in watercolors. I'm going to go through what I call the tier list um, of um, the best Prima Tech color and I'm going to rank them from like S which is like super class down from A to, to, to A, B, C, D, E and F which is like fail, fail, failing grade. Um, so how am I going to um, uh, rank these? So I rank this based on uh, my, my, what I like in watercolors. So I, I love granulating colors. I love colors that are separating. They, they have like rich texture. I love those kind of colors. Um, and also look at price and also whether I can find these uh, dupes that are cheaper and you know um, whether they are very different. Um, so this is how I'm going to rank these. And um, this is purely my list, um, so I, I make the choice. But I would actually, actually like to hear, to see your list. So if you have the time, um, do that for me. We can have a discussion. I think that'd be kind of fun. Um, if not, you can just, just give me a, your, you know, sh uh, write down your favorite colors and your least favorite colors from a Prima Tech range. So let's go. I'll do S and F first, and then I'll just fill in the rest in between. So first, um, I think I mentioned it many times, Paimontite, Paimontite. Is, is definitely in the S class because the color is, there, there are so many different hues in here. You see browns, you see red, you see, you see pink, and then you can dilute it down. It's just absolutely beautiful. I used it in one of our limited palette challenge and I love the color. Another color that I really, really love is Hematite Violet Genuine. So this color is also like a super separating color. It has like black particles and pink, um, a violet particle by violet. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really like a separating color on its own in, in one tube. Then, of course, we're talking about separating colors, we also have Serpentine. Serpentine has green and a bit yellow, brown as well. Green Appetite Genuine is also one that is pretty similar. You have that green and the brown together in one. They are all granulating and super beautiful. I think other than that, um, I also like Sodalite. Sodalite has these um, little veins. It's just, you know, it's so easy to be wet and the color is, it's like a mixture of purple and, and blue and black all together and you get these really nice veins like of, of water just going up. Like, I, I've not seen this kind in, this type of um, uh, pattern in paints. And um, similar to that, I would also say, um, I'm not sure. Okay, let's move on to my F. Um, the list, I, I, there might be, I might be adding more to this, but for now, let's go to the F, um, like the failing grade. So for failing grade, I'm failing Lapis Lazuri Genuine. So Lapis Lazuri in general is a pigment that is so, so expensive. It's a five, okay, it's five. And it's so weak. The pigmentation is just horrible. So there you go. Um, please don't buy and it's also the kind of that would actually separate so I bought so many lapis it's not it's not Daniel Smith's fault it's lapis lazuri's fault because I bought Shemika and it has the same problem so no all right <laughs> don't don't do it it's fine it's, it's also expensive so I don't think you need to spend that money to get that one let's go to the A because for A, I think um, they are not as mind blown. I'm not so mind blown, but I know what I like. Um, I like those that, that has these like super, like super uh, special granulation. So things like purple, right? Can you see how strong that granulation is? And also how, how it allows that, that, that you get to see this vein, like these um, particles very, very clearly. So another one is the tiger, burn tiger's eye. Look at that granulation, okay? Um, amethyst. So amethyst is both that and also it is it's shimmering. So I love that it also has shimmer. So that's like added opulence to it. 
um, and also I would also put um, bronzite in the same same section same section because of that um, that the burn bronzite as well so these two bronze they are the shimmering ones and they are beautiful uh, sugi light um, is also here okay <laughs> Then uh, let's let's go down. Okay, I, I can't think of more to add here. Um, maybe burn, maybe red jasper genuine as well. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm just gonna put this back first. Okay, and e e's are e e's are actually um, I think really expensive colors and colors that you can get like kind of dupes for. For example, like ron rodo, uh, ro rodo night. Rodo night has a dupe which is like quinacridone rose, which is not that expensive. Yeah, so I don't see why you need to spend more money to get it. So it, it goes in here. And uh, Fresh Eye is not granulating. It has it has sparkles. Um, no, so maybe I'll put it here. Like It has the shimmer, which I like. So I'm just going to put it a little bit above the Rondonite, uh, Rodonite. And it's the, same, it's the same reason why I'm going to put a uh, red Fresh Eye here. Um, because they are shimmering but they are non-granulating, so I'm not so keen. I don't really like those colors that are not very granulating. Um, and then we do have um, another color that goes into E is King Kingman Green Turquoise. Reason being, it's the, the price is so expensive. It's five, um, series five color. Um, and you can actually get like dupes like this, um, like your turquoise, the bottle turquoise. Um, yeah, they are not, they are expensive, but I don't think they are that pricey. Sleeping Beauty Turquoise, belongs to E for the same reason. It's expensive and you get a dupe like Cobalt Till. It's a better, much, much better color. So it goes in here. So it's like, it's also going in here. It's granulating, it's nice, but it's too expensive. It's also, a, it's a four um, expensive color. You can, Perlin Green is quite, you can, you can get like a dupe and Perlin Green is not expensive. So it goes in here. Um, okay, so now we're left with these, which I don't really use. Let me see, um, Mayan Blue. I like Mayan Blue, but not as much as the rest because it's not that granulating, so it goes on to B. Um, Blue Appetite Genuine is very similar. The color is pretty similar. Um, not too crazy. I like these lines, um, but it's a little bit duller, so I'm, I'm going to put it together with, with Mayan Blue Genuine. Same reason for, okay, for, uh, for, for Kyanite. Um, it has the shimmering particles, so I'm, I'm gonna put it in A because it has shimmering particles. And red jasper here is pretty pretty nice. Um, it has separate different separation. It has quite a good separation, and it's yeah pretty granulating. Yeah, I'm gonna put it here. And for the rest, okay, I love garnet, right? But garnet is for for a series four color, so it's quite expensive. Um, so I have to, I'm going to bump it down to C because it's expensive. And I do find that they're actually very similar colors. Can you see like this, this is, these are pretty similar. I don't think you can see very big differences. So um, for reason that th those are kind of cheaper, much cheaper, I'm going to put them like higher. So Sedona, Mami, uh, Balsic, Balsic and Balsai and the Minnesota Pipe Stone Genuine, they're all going to B. They're not crazy granulating. Um, the colors, I would say you can actually see burnt sienna, very close to burnt sienna colors. So mm, I'm not sure if I'm going to spend that too much money on these mineral colors. Then we have um, the hematite. Should I put it to, to, to C instead? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> For that reason, these are going down to C because um, um, I can actually get burnt sienna and they, they are, it's much cheaper um, and you have the same effect. And for that reason, I'm going to push uh, uh, Garnet Genuine down to D because it's so expensive and it's pretty similar. I do have this color, I love it, but yeah, now that I've gone through all the colors. Mm. Um, I Bloodstone Genuine here, I like the granulation, I think it's beautiful and it's like kind of a dark purple black, so it's going to be on B. Um, the other two, like this one, I think, um, okay, these two are series three colors and I think they are just kind of um, just normal black colors, um, which I think you can get um, if you have Mars Black, uh, Lunar Black, can be cheaper, um, you can really get a dupe um, and you don't really have to go for these two black uh, tourmaline and the Hematite Genuine. So we left with these colors. Um, Yava, Yava Pai. I, I'm not super impressed with this color. I think it's it's like a raw sienna, um, yeah, color. So 
and it's it's two so maybe it's a little bit better mm, yeah maybe it'll go up to b and these two colors are kind of like your um i, I think like german green umber color this is a little bit more uh, granulating but it's more expensive so mm, it's going down because it's, it's four um, series four color this is slightly better it's two so i'm just going up here but I think we do have dupes here, like the green umber, um, the German green umber. And then we have the hematite burn, uh, burn scarlet. It's like a burn sienna. No, not burn sienna, like a burn umber color. I don't like burn umber color. I think it is pretty normal. And the granulation is not, it's not crazy. So I guess it would go with um, B. Um, it's nice because it has slight separation. But yeah, for that reason of it um, not being too granulating. I'm just going to put it here. Um, the other colors that are left are like the Am Amazon Night Genuine. It's not granulating. Um, I think um, maybe Viridian is a good, I don't know. Mi mm, I think I would just put it, it's, ex it's probably like under B. It's not granulating, so I don't really like it that much. Yeah, maybe it will be together with the C because I would probably rather use things like Galveridian. Um, yeah, right, or Phalo Green, all right. Jada is beautiful, uh, but it's really expensive as well. Um, and I think it probably, for me, uh, would belong to, to a B, okay. It's a nice color. The color is, it's, it, it's, um, very good for forests, um, and I do have this, so I, I must say I, I kind of like it. The upside is tree, and um, I like these veins, right, that you can get from here. I think this one, the Jada also has it, so it might, it goes to on B as well, on here. Okay, so I don't know if you guys, like, um, agree with me, um, but uh, this is my, my summary of my tier of uh, favorite best um, Primatech colors from Daniel Smith. Um, do let me know under the comment section if you, are, if you agree with me. Maybe not. I'm, I'm okay. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear your views and, and maybe like convince me like maybe uh, Lapis Azuri should be S, you know. Yeah, <laughs> welcome any comments. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you like to see similar content. And also, uh, yeah, um, stay tuned for the next video. Um, I'll see you in the end soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>